feel that there is just something uh, inherently right about an all-girls education, but we know here at Kent Place that there is just something uniquely special about an all-girls education at Kent Place. Uh, one of the wonderful things about an education here is that girls not only have an equal opportunity, but they have every opportunity to be whomever they want to be, and we do everything very deliberately and intentionally to bring out the best in them. The first 10 years of life are the, the years in which your brain grows the most. So when you're really looking at someone who's five years old coming into kindergarten, half of that has transpired. And so you really want to go to a place that is um, not just going to promote how to do something, but why. And all the underpinnings, all the conceptual underpinnings, and how they're all connected and related. Creative thinking is going to be so key to what people do in the workplace. No matter what they're doing, they need to be innovative thinkers. And I think starting from the veriest early age to encourage that innovation, to encourage children to dare to be different and to try new things, just builds that in them for the later years when children start to want to be like each other in middle school and upper school. If they have a firm foundation, they're going to go into that situation knowing, no, it's okay for me to have my own voice. Sing a joyful song, sing a hymn, one, two, ready, and sing a joyful song, sing a hymn. The only human characteristics that exist and continue to exist are those that we need. So if we've held on to music for all of these years, that suggests that there's something fundamental, there's something essential about music that we as humans need. So here at Kent Place, that is integrated into the whole philosophy of teaching, not just music, but in dance, in drama, in art, and in the core curriculum. And that's one thing I appreciate about teaching here as well. And I will be helpful, and I'll be helpful. to my squad and teacher too. To my squad and Excellent job, squad leaders. Have a seat and welcome to the front. In trying to align developing leaders with our mission statement through physical education, using squad leaders was a great way to do it. This gives them a chance to find their voice, develop confidence in being in front of one another, and leading. And they get very excited when it's their turn. The teachers read to the students every day. but. They also have to teach other things like spelling and handwriting and social studies. They only have this much time for reading, but here we have this much time for reading. That's what our focus is, and on exploring all kinds of literature and finding just the right books for the children. Well, I think lessons like this are a perfect example where they have the opportunity to work with each other, to experiment. It's not me in front of the room saying, this is how we do long division. They are actually doing long division right now by working with manipulatives, talking to each other, and they have opportunities to experiment, to make mistakes. Uh, they're doing the, a second round again, so they're taking what they did in their first round of dividing. They have a new basket. They don't know what's in their basket now, and they're learning from what they did, and they're building on their knowledge. Brain research shows us that children are primed at that age to speak any language, whether it's their first language or whether it's a second language. And because of the long sequence of study, starting at age three for some of these girls, they're really able to achieve high levels of proficiency, going way beyond the AP level, taking level five or level six at the upper school level. They're outside constantly. We walk across campus to go to the field house. We walk across campus to go to the theater, to go to the cafeteria. They also have recess outside. They just have so many opportunities to move. Movement is so important in transitioning and just getting your brain ready for the next activity. And Kemp Place makes that so natural. I think my overall goal is for them to love science, to love questioning to not be afraid of getting their hands dirty, or um, I want them to feel, I'm a scientist, I have thoughts in my head, I have questions. That's what science is, it's questioning. It's questioning the world around you. And I want them to always look, I always say, use your science eye, look around you. What, do you, what do you think? And again, it's always them making the thinking first, and then actually doing it, carrying out the experiment. And um, I love it. <laughs> We 
we're not always focused on the right or the wrong answer. It's not always the focus on the product, but the process. How are we arriving at our conclusions? How are we taking in the strategies of other students? And children who are willing to take those chances, who are willing to experiment, willing to go outside their comfort zones are the children who really thrive here because they know that they will have the support and the guidance of their teachers to help them learn something new and or to learn a new skill or come to a realization that they hadn't been aware of before. So rather than just think of ourselves as an all-girls school, we like to think of ourselves as a school for girls because we're very intentional and very deliberate in using research-based, evidence-based practices about how all students should learn, but particularly how girls learn and develop best.